What's good my people, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, make sure you press that subscribe button. Now, there was a lot of football this weekend, all around Europe, but we'll start with the Premier League first. And it's only right we start with Nottingham Forest, bottom of the league, beating Liverpool. <laughs> Look, I know Darwin Nunes was injured, so he wasn't in the squad or whatnot, but yeah, Liverpool were beating 1-0. This is Liverpool that beat Man City the week before. Liverpool, who've been scoring goals. Mohamed Salah, who's come back to being his best, was absolutely invisible against Nottingham Forest. I think they said he had, like, what, four passes completed in the whole game or something like that. A terrible stat. Um, yeah, Dean Henderson, the Man United keeper who's on loan at Nottingham Forest, denied Liverpool on many occasions. And, um, yeah... Allison as well. Unbelievable for Liverpool in goal. So it's one of them games where obviously Liverpool could have come back and won the game, but it's also one of those games where um, Nottingham Forest had opportunities to actually go 2-0 up. You understand? Um, yeah, man. Terrible, terrible performance. I don't know what's going on with Liverpool this season. Klopp looks defeated. You know, I've heard this thing about the seventh year curse with Klopp at every club that he goes to. But um, yeah, man, it started to show. Um, Virgil van Dijk, like I said, had a lot of chances. Liverpool looked dangerous from set pieces and he he got to the um, end of the ball every single time and Dean Henderson made some great saves and the sum that van Dijk should have scored. But apart from that, look, Liverpool right now, talking about top four, I can't lie to you, it's, it's hard to still rule them out of the top four conversation, but they have been trashed this year. I don't see Liverpool even um, going that far in the Champions League this year. I know it's too soon to say, but when you actually look at the squad... Some of the players who were great started to look like they are declining. Isn't it? The other big game was Chelsea versus Man United. Now look, the talk during the whole week was Cristiano Ronaldo walking out on the team and refusing to come on when Man United defeated Tottenham 2-0. Um, so yeah, that's all we heard throughout the whole week. Um, so yeah, um, he was ruled out or should I say suspended from the first team for a few days and for the game against Chelsea, where Man United got a 1-1 draw at Stamford Bridge. A game where I felt like they were the better team, especially in the first half. It was clear to see they were the, better, they were the best team. Anthony had an amazing chance, an amazing chance to put United 1-0 up and missed. Um, but yeah, in the second half, like Chelsea, it was just a lot of maybe moments. Obama Yang almost breaking through, but not really doing it. Sterling as well, a, little, a, a lot of maybe moments. But United definitely looked like the better team. Um, Rashford had a chance as well. I think Bruno played him in in the first half, where I feel like it was too close to the keeper to place the ball properly and he had another attempt as well um, from the right hand side where it forced a good save from Kepa but yeah talk of that game the penalty McTominay obviously pulled down the player I don't even know what player it was Chelsea's Jorginho the penalty merchant <laughs> scored that penalty of course and um, United Casemiro with the equaliser, last minute, incredible header, bringing that Real Madrid spirit with him. And what and what a result for Man United, where, again, people were saying that Ronaldo's in that game, maybe they take those chances. But look, I'm not here to talk about maybes and ifs and buts. All I know is I hate Man United, but right now, to be honest, they look solid defensively. This Martinez guy, this so-called small centre-back, the smallest centre-back in the league, is absolutely bullying every striker right now. Bullying. He's been excellent for, for Man United. Um, obviously, disappointment for Varane, who was crying when he came off. Got an injury. Still waiting to hear what the injury is. But, um, but yeah, Chelsea as well. Right now, I don't, I don't know, man. Obviously, they haven't lost... For a little bit right now. But their football has been very inconsistent. But with United. You can see the identity. The philosophy that the manager is implementing. Obviously Casemiro looks brilliant now. You know. Fully, fully ready um, to play for United. Looks hungry. And I say he's bringing that mentality to the team. But um, United therefore does look more solid. With Chelsea again. They're just a bit up and down with their performances. So you're not sure whether they get, they're better or worse right now. But yeah. Um, impressive performance by United, if I'm totally honest with you. Man City 
beat Brighton 3 1. And um, we all know what everyone's going to talk about. Erling Haaland with two goals again, taking him to 17 league goals in the Premier League. So he equaled what Harry Kane scored for the whole of last season in the league. He's one goal away from equaling what Cristiano Ronaldo scored last season. He's six goals away from um, equaling the um, Premier League Golden Boot winners from last season, which was Son and Salah. So that's how incredible he's been when it comes to goal scoring. Um, Kevin De Bruyne scored an amazing goal as well. Trussard for Brighton, incredible player, scored a brilliant goal too. But yeah, Man City, obviously, we all know, whenever Man City lose, with Pep Guardiola, you know one thing, they are going to bounce back. When Man City loses, they are going to go undefeated for another 10 games. That's what you expect from them. And um, yeah, they got the job done. Bernardo Silva was brilliant as well. You know, Kevin De Bruyne was good. But like, yeah, Man City, what, what can you really say about them? We all know... Everyone, they've, they've turned this league to almost a farmer's league to a point where, like, everyone now is waiting to see what Man City do in the Champions League. You know, like in other leagues where people are saying, oh, no one cares about PSG winning the league. It's what they're doing in the Champions League. You know what I'm trying to say? In the Bundesliga, they say the same thing about Bayern Munich. Like, bro, they win that league every year anyways. It's about the Champions League. And now we get into that stage of Man City where people are like, look, they're clearly the best team in the league, you know. I know my team, Arsenal, are still first right now, but Man City are expected to win the league again. And um, yeah, but even if they win the league now, people are not surprised. Now they're waiting to see how far they go in the Champions League, especially when they've got a freak of nature when it comes to scoring goals in, in, in Erling Haaland, you know, and Kevin De Bruyne are one of the best playmakers in the world as well. So yeah, you have to give um, Pep the credit um, he's getting the best out of his players. But yeah. So let's go to my club. Arsenal. Southampton won. Arsenal won. Um, Arsenal in this game. Superb in the first half. Um, Gabriel Jesus should have scored. But refereeing was absolutely abysmal. We saw a penalty given yeah, to Chelsea. For McTominay grabbing a player. Having his arm around a player and taking him down. Gabriel Jesus was grabbed. Non-stop. A guy who's in a goal-scoring position, taking down both arms around him, I don't even think he went to VAR. They didn't see anything wrong with the challenge. And not only that, even for there were so many free kicks that the ref should have blown for. I mean, that defender was all over Gabriel Jesus. Both arms around him, pulling him down every time, but the referee thought there was nothing wrong with it. The consistency of the referee in the Premier League has been atrocious. And look, if, if um, the referee gave that penalty for Jesus, the guy would have had to got sent off. It would have been a red card denying a goal-scoring opportunity and Arsenal would have played against 10 men and would have won that game comfortably. But, however, we need to talk about it. Second half, though, we was poor. We looked tired. And this is where you can see the difference between the likes of Arsenal's and the Man City. Man City has a squad. Arsenal has a good first eleven, And some of the players, there will be games where some of the players are not turning up. But then when you look on the bench, you're bringing on Enketia. Um, Vieira who's a decent player as well um, and, and Marquinhos like bro that's not enough to win a game it's not enough it can help you sometimes but it's not enough it just shows our squad depth right now is not good enough and um, our players are looking tired so I'm hoping our next Europa League game Arteta just plays um, he just plays the guys that don't get minutes bro do not play the Jesus don't play the older guards, the Martinelli's, the Saka, because our players are starting to look tired, man. Partey, who was brilliant in the first half, was horrendous in the second half. Kept losing possession. Um, but yeah, man, so it was a mixture of too many things. Poor refereeing, um, not taking our chances, and just being looking like a tired team in the second half, and also not having a strong, a strong bench, <laughs> you understand, to change the game for us. But yeah, man, and Arteta as well, bringing on Nketi on the wing. That's two games now. Last game in the Europa League, he played on the wing. Bro, if you're going to put someone on the wing because you want to play Nketi, it's better to play Jesus there because he can actually dribble. You understand? And he's played on the wing where he's been effective before. Or you can just change the formation and play two up front. But you can't have Nketiah playing on a wig. The guy just looked lost and confused, bro. So there was Spurs losing to Newcastle. Newcastle who have looked absolutely brilliant brilliant 
Gamerez, I hope I said his name right, that brother there looks like a top, top, top baller, bro. You get me? Almiron, he's been turning up this season. Almiron has been turning up. Always been a good player, but hasn't always been productive. And that's exactly what he's been this season. Eddie Howe, I've always rated him. Excellent manager. You understand? Newcastle definitely, definitely got a good manager. A British manager who's actually, you can tell, studies the game outside of the Premier League. You can see what he's trying to implement with his tactics and how his team's playing. And they don't fear anyone. You get me? Joe Linton is looking like a unbelievable bowler. And remember, their best player is not even there at the moment. St. Maximin. John Joe Selvi on the bench. So, like, Newcastle look good. You know what I'm trying to say? Tottenham, though. Oh, my God. Antonio Conte is looking like a fraud. He is looking like a fraud. His football is horrible. Like, the guy is not going to bend, bro. He will keep playing that formation regardless of what anyone tells him. A formation that's got him battered. Yeah, by Sporting in the Champions League. A formation that's got him battered. By Arsenal. A formation that's got him battered by Man United. So yes, they've got injuries right now to very important players, but they just look horrific. You're meant to be a defensive team where but teams are peppering you non-stop. If it's not working, play to your strengths. This Harry Kane dropping deep stuff trying to find Son. It's old school. Everyone knows this. Everyone it's predictable. It's very, very, very predictable. Like Harry Kane, you have to put him in a box. You saw he scored, you know, set piece, whatever, a tapping little header. But, like, the reality is he's a big striker. Yes, he can pass, but, my guy, you want your nine in a box. You want your team to cross um, and Harry Kane be in there, you know. So, yeah, Spurs are looking horrible. Um, I just think the fourth spot is going to be between Spurs and Liverpool because right now both of them are inconsistent. Both of them look trash. Um, but yeah, Conte right now, look, this brother there, I guarantee you, if Tottenham do not finish in the top four, he's going to run away. He's going to run away. The guy doesn't know. Um, he, he's not He's not committed like that, bro. You know, he's that man that run away as soon as the going gets tough. So, and he starts to blame the players. He'll start to blame the board and everything. But the football they're playing, I said at the beginning of the season, they're winning. So it's calm. But every time I watch Spurs, it's just so boring. It's dull. But now we're seeing it.